All right, what's up, good people? This is Eddie Gray. Today we're going to be talking about IK Multimedia's beast of a plugin called Moto Bass. I believe there is no replacement, there is no surrogate for this incredible BST AU component that has taken over the world of bass instrumentation. Let's get right into it. You ready? Here we go. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Eddie Gray broadcasting live from LA. Hope you're all doing well. I have a surprise for you. I'm back at it again. Just feeling good today. Feeling joyous and ready to talk about my favorite subject in the whole world, known and unknown. We're talking about music production. This channel right here, Resources for the Modern Creative, is dedicated to serving you and allowing you to become the very best producer that you can in the game today. Why? Of course, because we're here to monetize our music. It's not enough just to play. It's not enough just to work on scales and modes. It's not enough to work on your fingering techniques. But of course, you have to get paid for what you are worth. And that's what we're trying to do here. So in order to do that, you have to have the best instruments possible. You have to be as efficient as possible. You have to have your workflow tight, on point, so you could work quickly. And of course, that you could be the very best that you can be. All right, we are talking about IK Multimedia's amazing plugin. I am absolutely in love with it. It's called Moto Bass. To me, there is nothing else better in the game right now. Nothing. I do like a couple of other basses, and I have them on the sidelines waiting to get in the game. But my primary player as of right now is Moto Bass, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Let me explain why. This Simulated bass instrument allows me to do so many different things. Not only can I choose various kinds of bass all under one umbrella, but the playing style, gauge string, the uh, amount of strings that are on the bass. Is it a five string? Is it a six bass uh, string? So many great factors here and so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go over the manual why are we doing this well if you're on the fence about buying this plugin or you just want to learn more maybe you're on the train maybe you're in an uber somewhere i remember those times when i was in transition and i was always trying to study a little bit more and so here i am at your service who am i my name is eddie gray uh we are so happy to be here and so happy to be a part of your musical journey Go ahead and subscribe so you can get all the latest and the greatest, and we're going to jump right in. Here we go. The way that we're going to do this is we're basically going to jump from the manual, as you can see here, and then sometimes we're going to dip over to Logic uh, and listen to the instrumentation. But let's go ahead and just check out the manual and, and see if there's anything else that we can get. If you haven't checked out my initial thoughts video on Moto Bass, you can do that whenever you have the time. All right, so here we go. Moto Bass is the first physically modeled bass virtual instrument that gives you an unprecedentedly realistic performance for your bass tracks. As a producer, you want the best possible bass sound you can get. You want realism, credibility, authenticity that delivers the most accurate and inspiring performance possible. Sometimes you just can't hire the right bass player and many virtual instruments out there kind of leave you feeling flat and uninspired. And I would definitely agree. I'm not going to name any names. We're not going to throw shade on anybody, but I will definitely say that this plugin is the best right now. Eight years in the making and developed in collaboration with one of Europe's oldest universities, Moto Bass is a completely new breed of instrument that delivers the best of both worlds. Guys, I literally have gotten rid of all of my, my software instruments, contact libraries. I'm just using this primarily. Um, now, of course, I don't think this is going to replace the bass as a whole. I just think it's a great way to supplement. Maybe as you're drafting up demos, and maybe if you're just in a hurry, right? You've got to draft up something really quick. Uh, you have to turn it into a publisher, to you know, a collaborator, and you need something of high quality. 
Moto Base has got your back. Let's move on here. Interacting with Moto Base. We created Moto Base with the real base player in mind. This means that all techniques, positions, articulations, and style of playing have been studied to help you recreate how a base player chooses a base, plays his base, how he moves across the fingerboard and the neck, and how he or she touches the string to get a particular sound to fit a specific genre. Guys, they have, they've gone deep with it, right? They really, really churned out a great product. All the panels you find in the GUI, they work together and interact with each other to react to your playing and create exactly the sound that you want, just like in real life. And I'll be going over some examples here in a second. If you're just uh, getting on here, welcome. We're going over Moto Bass by IK Multimedia, the very best virtual instrument in regards to bass in the game today. The best results, of course, will come when you think like a bass player, right? So what I want you to do when you get some downtime is I want you to try and study some of the legendary bass players of our time. Too many to name, but definitely you want to go from genre to genre. Study funk, right? Study rock, uh, study uh, jazz. You know, you, you basically want to emulate and at least, at the very least, you want to learn some of the subtleties when these legends are playing bass, what exactly are they, do are they doing with their fingers? Um, listen to the dynamics. Listen to just the overall mood and presentation of how they do what they do. And so I think that's very important before we go into this. Because if you're going to create realistic, authentic bass lines, bass productions, you kind of need to know where all this comes from. So just keep that in mind. It's easier than it seems. And with some practice and experimentation, Moto Bass will give you infinite possibilities with a sound indistinguishable from a real bass. Tall claim. Tall claim. Let's see if they come through. So now we're on the user, the user interface, and this is now when we're going to jump into Logic um, so I could show you how this works. Now, this video is not specific to any DAW, of course, because we can use this in just about any single DW that's out there. All right, so the way we're going to be presenting this today is I'll be playing live from time to time, but for the most part, I'm going to be playing these MIDI regions, which I basically just dragged in from the Apple Loop Browser, and then I'm also going to be taking advantage of Logic Step Sequencer, which comes with a fairly, fairly robust set of bass patterns, drum patterns, and melodic patterns. So we're also going to take advantage of that. All right, so here is the user GUI. It looks outstanding. I can't, I can't think of another instrument that looks like this. And we're just simply talking about straight up, just the way that it looks. All right, and so that's, that's already a, uh, you, you know, a big part of it is like they took the time to really make this work visually. You can see that they have the piano roll telling you where the notes are being played, right? And then you have the bass fret neck board right up here. And then you've got the categories uh, in terms of which model are we using, the play style, strings, electronics, amplifier and effects, which sound amazing by the way, and then control. All right, so let's go from the top. And so then now we're basically going back and forth between the manual and the GUI. Here we go. The user interface is resizable, fit your needs, starting from the minimum of 1032, 724. There is no maximum. Pretty cool. So here it is, four main sections. We have the top bar. This is where we save our presets. We have user settings, things of that nature. And we have the upper tab, which contain all the various categories. The central view, which is going to house all the various uh, uh, parts of the base. In other words, when we like shift over to like play style, for example, um, or strings, you'll be seeing different parts of the base that are highlighted. Um, 
let's see, for example, if I go from a four string to a five string, obviously that's gonna now look a little bit different and you will see those changes reflected in uh, the user interface there. Um, if I go to model, here's where we can change all the bases. So even though a P base is originally a four string, it looks like you can still kind of hack the system a little bit here. Um, so just want, want to kind of make you aware about that. All right, let's keep going here. Top bar. Here you can browse, save, save as, and delete presets. To browse and select the preset, simply click on the preset name, which will open up a pop-up list, then click on the desired preset. So if we want to start with a preset per se, we click here right next to the up and down arrow menu and we start to sift through some options. We want finger style bass playing, picking style. Now I personally like to make all of mine custom. I think that's part of the fun, but hey, let's try out something like extreme bass playing, adding vibrato. I'm just going to go through a couple of these presets here and let's check out... Uh, some of the, the bass lines that I've put together for you here. Okay, so just to give you some context, here's what it sounds like with just a very basic um, custom jazz sound. Check it out. Now you can't tell me there is another instrument in the game today that sounds like that. Because that sounds like there's somebody in the room with us right now that's literally just cranking out some amazing bass lines. I mean, seriously, listen to this. It's crazy, right? Modern J bass, check it out. Now what's really wild about this, if you've ever played a bass, because it's kind of hard when you don't have any context, but they're using a mahogany neck on this specific instrument. And I could hear the difference. I could hear the tonal characteristics change over time. Whereas on this bass, it looks like a rosewood. And, and by the way, I'm not some like guitar aficionado, okay? I know just enough of pretty much anything in order just to kind of get by and make sure that I get paid to do what I love, which is music, music production, all things music. So really incredible that they're capturing the nuances it must be deeply, deeply sampled. Now, just to give you a, a stark contrast, let's go to the Paul McCartney bass here and, and just check out the difference. That same bass line. Take a listen. Now, part of the reason we're getting such a dire uh, a difference in sound is because they're using different strings. Right, you have the ability to use round wound or flat wound strings. Check it out. As compared to. So it's all of these subtleties that are going to make the biggest difference. Let's go ahead and select one more preset. This time we're going to go pick and we're going to choose disco funk. Let's go. So it's really interesting with this bass, you can tell the action was really low. In other words, I heard a lot of buzzing. And so if you want to change the action, you can't look. And by the way, I've only played with this a couple of times. I've really been active. I just recorded an album for a publisher. I haven't had time to really look into the details. But because I have enough of that knowledge, I can I can tell that the action was low on this bass. I've never played with these presets before until right now. Check it out. And that's what separates this instrument from all the rest and why I don't think anybody is remotely close to what IK Multimedia has accomplished with Moto Bass. Okay, uh, let's carry on here. So we can select... Presets says here that uh, when a parameter is modified on a loaded preset, an asterisk will appear to alert you that the preset has been modified and needs to be saved if you want to preserve the changes. Of course, you don't have to. You saw that I made some changes with this specific base. I think we were talking about action, right? And so 
you see the asterisk right up here. And so then if I wanted to save this, um, I wouldn't recommend you save it. I would recommend you save as. I don't think you'll replace it if you just save it. Uh, but maybe, yeah, yeah, actually you would. Do you want to replace the preset? So you got to be very careful. Make sure that you save as so you can create your own user presets. All right, so we kind of went over this. Let's shift into the icon. It's going to display the software license information. All right, the lock icon is going to open up the authorization manager. And the gear icon is going to open up the settings. So let's go into that now. Velocity curve and the units of measurement. Of course, depending on which country you're living in, that's going to be pertinent. So what's up with the velocity curve? Let's see if we get some information here. Oh, we don't get anything? Hmm. I wonder if this has to do with the sensitivity. We're about to find out. Here we go. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, okay. So let's go really, really hard. 100. All right. Let's bring that down to zero. Yeah. So essentially, how hard will this be playing um, the, the performance? So um, I'm sure there's a there's a much more fluid explanation, but if you're looking for a a hard response, you really want this to 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 slash and and play out hard. You might want to increase that velocity curve. If you're playing very quietly, you might want to drop that down a little bit, as you can hear with this performance here. Right, and even if I lower that a bit more especially when I transition into the second region or the second part of that bass performance, you'll really hear uh, it, it soften quite a bit. Check it out. So it really just depends on the dynamic nature of not just the song, but the, the player, uh, him or herself. How do you want them to play? How loud? And so another way to think about this is like, it's going to essentially influence the entire uh, velocity, almost like a velocity offset. Let me explain further. Um, if you look at all of my MIDI region here inside of Logic Pro, you can see I have various colors that are all basically uh, displaying various velocity values. For example, if I hover over this MIDI event, you can see the velocity value is at 107. Whereas if I go to this red MIDI event here it's at 122 so it's hotter right it's playing a um uh, uh, a tougher or or harder sample so check this out if i make all of this uniform and i play everything at red that's going to be the equivalent of raising up that velocity curve check it out because it's playing the 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 higher values you see when these answer when these instruments are sampled they're they're sampled in a very detailed way um i mean look it took what did it say eight years to make did i read that wrong eight years to make somewhere let's see where was that uh somewhere up here yeah eight years in the making that is not a joke so you, you would imagine that when they started sampling, they probably put so much time really uh, making this work on such a deep level. Um, now, depending on if you're using this, uh, hold on, let me go back up here. If you're using this in the DAW version, in my case as an AU component, we're not gonna see the audio MIDI settings. It's not until you use the standalone version that that's gonna come into play. And so I can't speak to that at the moment, but um, you essentially just choose all the typical settings. You know, where is the MIDI input coming from? Um, what's your output device? In other words, where is Moto Bass going to be playing out of the buffer size so you don't get any latency, so on and so forth. Uh, okay, cool. Let's keep it moving. So now we're transitioning from the top portion to what they're calling the upper tab. All right, this is where most of the changes are going to be happening within the GUI. 
So again, model, play style, these kind of strings, are they old, are they new? The electronics, we're talking, are they humbuckers, dual humbuckers? Um, so yeah, all talk about pickups, amplifier, effects, and then the control section. Let's go. All right, first step you to create the perfect bass line for your track is to choose the instrument, which will start to define the road you want to take. The model tab lets you choose between 14 of the most iconic and legendary bass models from the history of music, superbly recreated using Moto Bass. I concur. For example, for a folk track, a five-string active pickup studio bass probably will not fit, right? So of course, you have to fit the right tool for the right job. So the choice is yours. Keep in mind that by choosing one of the available models, all the physical aspects of that specific model are automatically selected. The mechanical construction of the body, the neck, the type and the age of the wood, the sustain of the instrument, the type and age of electronics installed, and the strings that are used all come with mode. Also note that the number of frets on the neck of the original instrument will limit or expand the range of possibilities. That's one thing that I do like, that they actually honor the instrument's range. A lot of instruments don't do this. It's like you could just play, you know, anything uh, regardless of, of its actual, um, you know, authenticity. So that's pretty rad. To select a bass, simply click on it. It will be loaded. The specifications info will, is going to show you all the various parameters of the bass. As you can see here on the illustration, right? Is it, uh, what's the age of the bass, the, the gauge of the strings, the action, the circuitry, yada, yada. So that gives you a bird's eye view into uh, what you are going to be playing. And I think that's pretty much it there. Okay, so these are all the various models. You've got your 60s P bass. I love that look, that sunburst, that sunburst look, really nice. 70s P bass, really nice. There's that jazz bass. Good. There's, there goes another one. Looks like a little bit more modernized. The Devil Bass, based on Gibson's EBO. Pretty cool. Can't wait to listen to that. Of course, you have your Ernie Balls. Right, that's a five-string right there. Rickenbacker. Right, what series would be complete without the Studio Bass? Look at that beast. Is that a six-string? Yep. Oh no, that's a five-string. Okay. Got Paul McCartney's bass there. The Thunderbird. Cool. Japanese bass, sound gear, this was really popular. I think bands like Korn, uh, I don't know, back in those metal days, I think that a lot of people use that. Same with Warwick, another four-stringer. Check out this guy, this is a six-stringer. All right, another metal bass. These are specialized basses. All right, so we're going to move to playing style. I will just demo a couple of these basses for you. I'm just going to be selecting the model and not choosing anything else. Um, so let's listen to the Ernie Ball. just to give you a sense what everything sounds like and again we didn't touch any parameters that was just going through all the various models all right let's go into play style the second category inside of the gui this panel lets you select the way the bass is played when you choose to use fingers or you can slap or you can use a pick completely different sounds this will also load the physical recreation of all the variables related to the selected style so when you select either finger, pick, or slap, the components or the, or, the, or the parts here are going to change to slightly reflect the playing style. Okay. So when you're using finger, for example, we now have the option of 
not only just muting the play style, which is really, really cool. Can't wait to show you this. But we're also going to be playing with stroke. This uses the modeling of either an alternate fingering technique, just an index finger playing, the middle finger playing technique. Because when a bass player is playing with his or her fingers, they have kind of different ways of attacking the strings, depending on speed and just skill, to be honest. And so if you want to have an alternate style where the bass player is going from, here, let me check you guys out. When the bass player is going from like, you know, index, re, uh, middle, index, middle, and that kind of will give you a sense of realism, right? Especially if you're playing like eighth notes or something like that. Um, if you just play with the index finger, that is going to hit the strings a certain way, and it's going to vibrate, of course, the bass a certain way. And if you play with the middle finger, that has a different vibe altogether. So really incredible that they really, that they pulled this off, right? And on top of that, again, this mute function here is really going to blow your mind. So let's, um, let me bring you back in. Okay. So we have stroke, which allows us to play with the, the finger style and how we're going to play the bass. Then we have touch. Are you playing softly? normal or hard right and this all really depends on the bass player him or herself or the song or the part when you move the pluck position the sound changes just like in real life when moving towards the neck the sound becomes more rounded and when moving towards the bridge the sound gets more metallic so this right here is really amazing hold on let me check you guys out one more time all right so let's see uh <laughs> there, wait this way okay so that right there is the bridge. So if you play, if you move that orange uh, indicator, you see where it says 10.02. If you move that this way, uh, the other way, closer to this bridge right here, basically it's going to sound brighter, more metallic. And that's really cool for rock music, right? If, you, if, if you're kind of moving into a hook and you want to get louder, you don't even have to increase the amplitude, right? All you have to do is just move that over. To, to give listeners the sense that things are moving in a new direction, right? Things are being heightened. Now, if you move in the other direction, closer to the, to the actual fretboard, you're going to have a rounder, warmer tone. So this all really just depends on how you want to do things. So just to be clear, let me see if I can get myself over here. Um, yeah, here, uh, there. So if you play closer to here, it's going to sound a little bit different. Just, you know, uh, kind of contingent on the bass and all the various parameters. So this is no joke. This is not for, you know, just anybody. Like if you really want to pull this off, they've given you every single parameter available. Let me show you the mute function, which is one of my favorites. There's a lot of good stuff in here, but just one of my favorites. Let's jump into logic again. So I'm going to go start with the P bass, right? And um, this time I'll just play this in with my MIDI controller. And I'm going to go into play style. And you can see I'm using my finger, right? So if I use my pick, you can see that we're, go we're getting kind of closer towards the, um, the bridge. And then the slap does not even consider that because we're using, you know, a different play technique. So with finger, though... Um, I'm going to take off this mute function first. Let me just play this. Um. Oh. Technical difficulties. Okay, check this out. Okay, so now let me play that same part, but let me increase the mute. So you can hear the difference in dynamics and how it has shifted greatly. Let me go over to 100% so you can really hear what I'm talking about. So then if I change that back to zero, it's pretty ridiculous.
ridiculous. I mean, seriously. Really wild. Now compare that same bass line to this picking style. Playing a chord like this, uh, I mean, that sounds so realistic. If you've ever actually played a chord on a bass, um, uh, yeah, pretty crazy. All right, let's keep this going. So let's talk about this pluck position. As mentioned, the closer I play to the Brit, uh, hold on, let me make sure that you're looking. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the closer you play to the bridge, the the warmer it's going to sound. So I'll just play one note for now, and I'll start backing off this way to the bridge and it's going to sound brighter rather here we go now that's with a pick listen to this with the finger okay So that is going to influence the play style. I know what I've done for some of my tracks um, is I'll create two versions and on the choruses, I'll literally just change the, the second region. So like, for example, if I was doing something like this, I would move this one over to the right and the software instrument on track number one would have, you know, warmer, rounder tone, maybe a bit more muted and then the second track, where we move into, let's say, a more epic part of the song, I'll change the play style, right? We'll go higher into the bridge, take off some of the muting, and then play with some of the other parameters. Just to kind of give a sense that things are shifting, right? Things are getting louder. We're going somewhere. All right, let's uh, go back and let's talk about picking. When we shift into the world of picking... Uh, of course, we're not using our fingers anymore, so it's a different tone altogether, right? Old school punks and rockers can get the sound of a picked bass and adjust these parameters. And and of course, this is not just for rock, but probably not a bad idea to uh, consider it for rock. So with stroke, we use the modeling of either an alternate peaking, meaning down and up. So when the player is playing, let's say, 16th notes, uh, you know, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a, that kind of thing. Um, it's down up down up down up down up rather than just down 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 down. That's going to play a different way. It's a different experience, and so this is going to change that play style where it's down up or it's going to be using a up pick only playing technique. And so when the bass player plays just going up, it's going to sound a little bit more aggressive because he's kind of. I don't know, going against the uh, the string, kind of uh, applying a little bit more force. Um, let's go ahead and verify that. So if I go into... Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, pick, and then we change the play style. So not just down, let's go up and see what that sounds like. Kind of here sounds a little bit unnatural where if I play that same bass line, let's say going alternate, I should rectify that. Let's see if that's true. Um, 
pig style alternate. All right, so that's sounding a little bit different. And if I go stroke down, he's just playing going down, right? Good. Now, if you wanted more scratch, you can go ahead and choose that option. So when you do play against the string, there's a little bit more of an edge to it. All right. All right, so let's move into the pluck position slap all right so now we get stroke is auto and then the threshold is at 120 so let's see how all of this plays out well they say this is the most difficult and the most wanted when we talk about groove it's a technique that uses the rotation of the wrist to slap the string listen to a bass player like flea to uh you know i mean any funk band uh, Neville Brothers, uh, any anything like that, um, that will tell you the whole story. Um, and then you pull with usually the index finger, so thumb, and then pull with the index finger. Here you can adjust the stroke to decide to use the modeling of an auto pull technique, automatic slap, or uh, a slap only playing or a pull playing only technique. So it looks like there's different techniques. When auto is selected, the pull is always triggered over a certain velocity amount. So as soon as you, you, you play the MIDI note over a certain velocity, it's going to automatically trigger the pull. Um, and that, that velocity can be decided on with the threshold knob. So you could designate it by using that threshold knob. Uh, let's see if we can kind of wrap our heads around that. So if I'm in... Um, hold on. Okay. Just want to make sure that my velocity. Yeah. Um, I have two settings with velocity. One of them is just like on, where basically it's just playing the same exact velocity. Uh, and then if I turn it off, I can actually play, you know, lower values and higher values. So I just want to make sure that we're looking at this correctly. All right. So. Um, All right, so I'm just trying to figure out when that there's that pull technique. You can hear it right there. Right? There's a difference between it's going to sound a little bit brighter. So I'll play a, a basic bass line without it first. So it's going to sound something like this. Oh, hold on. It went up an octave. Um, Okay, so then now notice when I pull back on threshold, he's playing thumb, thumb, and then she plucks with the index finger um, on that on that octave, right? So it goes. That sounds really <laughs> amazing. I mean, seriously. For all you bass players out there, go ahead and hit me up. Let me know what you think of this really crazy stuff. All right, so that's auto. And then you can designate just slapping with no pull. So this is just like basically the thumb playing the whole time. And then just pulling, so just the index finger pulling back. Alright, sounds like... 
80s TV music. All right, really cool. So obviously a combination of auto is really going to be the ticket and you finding the proper threshold for your tune. Of course, uh, the pluck position is going to disappear because slapping is only used in a fixed position placed at the end of the neck. All right, muting. Told you this is my favorite technique, which you use the palm side of the right hand, unless you are left-handed, where you dampen the strings while playing, which cuts the sustain and harmonic content. The muting knob lets you select how much you want to mute. So let's listen to that a little bit more. and Let me play you another bass line. This, actually, this bass line is pretty rad. Check it out. Um, so I guess we'll start with finger and then we'll move to pick. So bear in mind the muting is at a low value right now. Now that would probably be like almost physically impossible for anybody but a virtuoso to be able to to kind of mute yourself like that and play. Now, of course, with this virtual instrument offering, it's all just available just at a moment's notice. Um, let's go ahead and play with the picking here. So here's no muting. Incredible. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, let's keep moving here. The playing technique is not limited to the right hand. You can also use the left. And the combination of the two makes the realism really come out. Alright, so we've got some other parts that are going to influence the overall sound of Moto Bass, for example. Are you going to let this ring literally playing without stopping the strings while playing, leaving the strings to naturally sustain? So in the part um, uh, that we're using right now, this is actually a good example, I think. Because um, we can we can stop the playback. Let me go to this finger mode again. Here, take a listen. Oh, wait a minute. I think this part is the one I was talking about. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So so listen to the pauses in between. Listen to the silence in between the various notes. Okay. If I let it ring. Look what happens. It's not going to be... Whoa, don't let that ring. It's almost like it just... let it's, it, it uses the sustain pedal for you, and um, it's going to sound a little bit more fluid in terms of just the overall performance. So it just depends on how you want to do this. Um, you can have the verses be a little bit more staccato like this. Sorry. And then when it's time to kind of play out a little bit more, then you can do something like this. Now, normally to pull that off, I would have to go into the MIDI region. I'd have to hit Command A. I'd have to hit Shift, uh, uh, this Shift Slash, yeah. And basically have the MIDI events follow over to the next region. And, and so then this is going to now kind of save me the time uh, in having to do that. So take a listen. So before, or you can pull off that same idea by letting it ring. It still sounds a little bit more natural when we do let it ring. I'm not sure what else they're doing, but, um, but yeah, it's sustaining very nicely. All right, fingering, what's this about? We get the option of choosing first position, easy or nearest. So this toggles uh, the button that allows you to select between three different left-handed behaviors. It causes the bass to play within the first five frets if you're using first position. Really good for classic rock and things of that nature because 
in during that time, as I understand it, they were playing mostly kind of in that first position, unless of course somebody was soloing or something like that. When the note range is exceeded, the movement is limited to the G string. So if you choose first position, then basically, depending on your progression, the bass player is going to just play within the first. I don't think this is a good choice for this bass line because I think this is like played up the neck. But let's check this out. Okay, now it's still showing signs of playing up the fretboard, but it does say here that if you kind of go outside of the limits, the movement is limited to the G string. So basically everything will be played on that high string. Let's see uh, if that rings true. Yep. Yeah, just as he said, as soon as I went up the scale there, you, you saw that basically they went over to the G string. So that's cool. What are the other ones? Easy. It's a fixed behavior based on the study of the top 10 100 riffs of all time and how the basses played them. <laughs> wow. Okay. So let's go ahead and check that out. Uh, so now this is the easy fingering. Same bass line. Let's take a listen. Yeah, it has its own decisions. Uh, I don't know how it's computing, but they studied the top 100 riffs of all time. That's not how I would play that riff. I'll tell you that right now. But anyhow, uh, nearest, this dynamic behavior lets the engine search for the nearest note to the last plate. All right, let's check that out. Uh, yeah, I would play it more like this. When we address open string, what are we saying here? What are we talking about? Enables the possibility to play open strings in a riff. You might have noticed that in all of the other settings, we weren't really playing anything on E, A, D, or G. You have four strings. Now, if we turn this on, maybe we get an open string here and there. Let's see. Yeah. So, dun, 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 dun. on that specific note, uh, we get the D. Check it out. Yeah, we even got the G. And that's going to sound uh, a little bit more resonant. It's going to have a little bit more of a vibrant quality because it's an open string, right? You get more vibration. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. You can actually choose that as well. I want to hear that same part with this bass line. Let me take a listen. Right now, if I chose open string and then I chose alternate and fingering to not, let's try first position, see what happens. Yeah, that doesn't sound or look realistic. Let's try easy. For some reason, it's sustaining without me telling it to sustain. I think that's just a little bug. Let me go back to this here. All right, so. Hmm. All right, that might, I think I'm going to change this model. Let's try this out.
Yeah, there might have been a MIDI message inside of the piano roll that was kind of getting things to play out in a funny way. Let's keep going here. So what is detached noise and what is slide noise? This is very pertinent, right? Because when you actually play a physical instrument, you do hear that fret noise. And so let's see how they, they help you get rid of it. Let's you adjust the amount of detached noise. So when you lift from one position to another, uh, it's usually caused by the finger pressing and releasing the frets. Looks like they address that. And then when you slide, let's you adjust the amount of slide noise as well. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's go with no detach or slide noise. I want you to hear all those details. Let's see. Okay, so then when I increase detached noise, let's see what happens. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Because so when I had this set to zero, we weren't hearing anything. It was just the bass perfectly played. Now we're, we're inc including this detached noise feature, and it sounds really really uh, realistic. Like you're hearing an actual uh, performance, you know, all the, 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 the clinks and clatter that you would normally hear. Let's increase the slide noise considerably. Not hearing anything yet. So yeah, not hearing any slide noise. I'm not sure if that's because I need to change the bass style, but let's listen to this. Let's change the bass performance. Maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah, that's not working either. Let's try one more. All right, yeah, not getting much by way of slide. Maybe because I have to play in different octaves or something, but I'm not really hearing how it's uh, adjusting the fingers moving between the frets. I don't know. Let me play something live. I'm hearing a lot of stuff there, but I don't think this is a... Now, that's the detach. I'm looking for sliding, so not sure. Um... All right, if you guys have anything with that, please let me know, but not really seeing anything about slide noise. Not sure if it's attached to velocity or what have you, but the show must go on. We're moving on to the strings panel. So what happens here? Uh, in order to pull this off, let me go ahead and choose another bass. Let me just start with something. Uh, let me go with this guy. Okay, so strings. So you get the option choosing a five, four, or six string. Of course, the range will increase accordingly. So we have drop D. Uh, the E is on the fourth string. It will sound different from the same note on the fourth string. So that's cool, the, the fact that they really kind of paid attention to that kind of thing. Again, I'm not some you know uh, guitar player that knows everything about strings and all this stuff. Uh, but I, I do love the fact that we can create an authentic, realistic bass sound in seconds it, it it definitely you know lights me up um in terms of drop this has to do with 
tuning the lowest string one tone lower, very prevalent in rock music. Besides extending the range, this loosens the string, giving it a particular behavior. If you ever tune to drop C, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just, it just sounds heavier. So let's go ahead and check that out. So that's already pretty deep. Let me go ahead and type in uh, or enable open strings inside of play style. All right, hold on. I'm just trying to get my uh, setup right here. Hold on. Here we go. Good. All right, let me choose another bass because this is uh, kind of confusing me a little bit. Let me go to 70s. All right, sweet. Just trying to find that register. All right, perfect. So then if I, actually, let me choose this bass. Yeah. All right, if we go back to play style, you allow for open strings. Then I go to strings and I drop to in the fourth. So currently on E. That will be on D now. And you know, that's pretty rad because I'm still hitting the same MIDI note, but you can see it's different on here. Yeah. So they actually change that accordingly on the GUI. So yeah, it definitely sounds heavy. Um, otherwise... If I don't enable this, basically this is the lowest that I can go. If I enable it. All right, let me type going grunge. All right, let's uh, continue on. All right, they got a Jocko bass in here. All right, so in terms of action, we talked about that. It sets the distance between the strings and the neck, which changes the fret noise, right? Earlier on in the video, I pulled up a preset, and I could tell right away this is low action, right? Um, so this is how um, you get different tonal variations. So we have low, standard, and high. Uh, go ahead and take a listen to this bass line as I change this from low, then to standard, then to high. All right, let me go ahead and change the play style to the first position and hopefully we get a bit more string buzz here let's see how this works yeah i'm not hearing a lot of string buzz i'm not sure if that's because it's a different bass i think we were using the jazz bass before let's see if this uh is true it could also have to do with the play style. In other words, if I play a little bit harder, maybe that influences 
um, the way that uh, the strings are buzzing against the fretboard. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so you can hear those slight variations between that buzzing starting when I started playing it with a harder attack. All right, but that only happened because I started making adjustments to the to the attack style. Um, so yeah, little things that are that are just kind of influencing how everything is playing. Um, keep all of that in mind when you are creating your sound. Uh, it definitely is very intuitive. You know, you can kind of like start poking around and, and just try and get the right sound. Um, why I'm at, so enthusiastic about it is because. I now have so many more options than I've ever had. Before, it was like, you know, adding a little bit of distortion, maybe EQing a little bit off the top. But now, again, this is unprecedented. Uh, we have anything that we want at our disposal. All right, so now let's not talk about the, uh, the action. Let's talk about the, the string type. And for this, let me try out this Japanese bass. Or actually, let me do this, yeah, this studio bass here. Take a listen. <laughs> Okay, so it's a five stringer. We've got low action, and I'm going to change this to flat wound strings. So, what was the first thing you noticed, right? So, the, the, the proper adjective is something like brighter, right? Sounded more like it was in the high end, high frequencies. Right, if I change that, sounds more tinny, metallic. So, different sounds because of course we're using different string types and if we change the gauge that also is going to influence the overall sound all right so then if i go to a light gauge it should sound uh tinnier higher end let's see yeah it sounds more vivid as well and more organic and visceral so if we're playing funk music, you know, metal, that that that's super apropos. That's going to fit right in. Whereas if we're, you know, I don't know, playing something softer, you might want to use flat wound strings and a heavier gauge so that there's more bottom end. Right? It makes a little bit more sense in that context. The age of the strings, are they going to be old, brand new? <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. This is just crazy. Okay. Um so Let's see, construction type of the strings. Uh, it lets you select between round wound to keep the more classical, think Paul McCartney type sound, or you can use flat wound strings as well. Um, flat one's going to be, you know, more modern sounding, brighter, uh, whereas that, that round wound is going to sound like an old Beatles record or something. Um, so the gauge... The thickness of the strings can affect the overall timbre. Oh, I didn't understand. I didn't know that it would actually affect sustain as well. Um, let me see if that. So under light. Okay, so I'm just hearing that first note heavy. Yeah, definitely carries through, and that makes sense because it's reverberating longer. Uh, okay, how long have these strings been used? Are they elastic? Are they? How are they going to affect the timbre or the sustain by selecting a new string? A sustained and shimmering timbre will produce, while a more warm, damped timbre can be selected using old string settings. Select broken in for the most standard state. Crazy, right? good sets the a note frequency for allowing tuning offsets so it looks like 
if you you know are creating different styles of music uh micro tuning is available here all right let's move on to electronics all right i mean that would have been enough right there honestly i would have been completely sold and lifelong fan but now they took it to another level they said hey do you want to change the actual components right the, 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 do you want humbuckers do you want to uh you know play with the neck do you want to change the circuitry i mean this is this is crazy Let's let, let's learn a little bit more here. This panel allows you to tweak all the parameters of the electronic of the bass, starting from the original model. Like the other tabs, Moto Bass recreates the behavior of the electronics and its variables in changing the parameters, but is not limited to only this. You can customize your own bass by selecting different pickups. You can select, you know, the original on one set, and you can position them. Uh, in the available space of the current body, each ba bass can host a maximum of two pickups. So you can basically soup up Paul McCartney's bass from back in the day, and you can, you know, go ahead and deck it out with, let's say, some current, I don't know, metal humbuckers. You know, th this this would be this would be so expensive in today's age to try and do. Let's see what that sounds like, by the way. Right, so if I change both of these, let's do the thunder pickups. Because of the body and the way that this was made, it's going to just kind of switch up the entire sound. So, so just endless possibilities here. Um, let's see here. Let's look at all the various pickup models. So here we go. You can interchange all of these. Um, we're going to go into the circuit tab, which is going to allow you to select the behavior of the pickups. Are you using passive or active? Different sound set here. The active system adds a bass, mid, high parametr parametric EQ. So if I go to active, I go to passive, um, these are going to behave differently because passive pickups really... They just kind of, they are what they are, whereas when you move into this active world, you get to determine, I want more bass, uh, what have you. So let me go ahead and change this to a Rickenbacker, and uh, let's go back into electronics. All right, good. And then let's go back into finger style playing. Okay, what's piezo for? Let's check that out. This is going to set the volume of one of the pickups, normally placed under the bridge, can be mixed with the standard pickup, allowing for a much more customizable sound. All right, so let's check this out. If we blend this. So not hearing that much um, information, but but there is a little bit of detail that's coming through. Okay, let's take this off. Yeah, the only way I could I could kind of describe it is it's just just becoming more real. Like I'm hearing more of the finger characteristic, uh, more color, things of that nature. So that's piezo. Uh, when the electronics panel is selected, you can move the position of both pickups in the central view with extreme accuracy where it shows a precise distance. Oh my goodness gracious. I thought I, I had it all figured out here. Looks like you can move the pickups? Oh man, that is crazy. Guys, guys, hold, jeez, hold on. Our <laughs> Like I know there's other people like me that are totally into this and they're just they're all about this life. This is just the most ridiculous piece of software ever created, hands down, period. I mean, the next stage of evolution is somebody actually playing the bass for us. Like a a bot just saying, Hey, right, do you want metal? Are we doing like are we doing rock today? What are we doing? Like, this is crazy. 
Nothing has ever been made like this before. And again, I'm stating it right now, stating it today, that I will no longer use any other bass instruments or drum instruments because you guys know that I love Moto Drum as well. And if I if I need a secondary option, I'm going to have it, you know, on the side. It'll be there in some hard drive, some dusty hard drive somewhere. But it's over, guys. Moto Bass taking over. I mean, I'm serious. This is ridiculous. Let's go ahead and finish off here. Thank you guys so much for being here. Really appreciate uh, having you guys. Uh, and thank you for supporting the channel. We're going we're gonna, to uh, shift into amp and effects. Make sure that you guys, yeah, we're all on the same page. Sweet. So to complete the simulation of the entire bass, of course, we have to talk about amplification and effects pedals. So we have two amps and four stomp effects. That's all you need. Trust. This is powered by Amplitube, of course, also by IK Multimedia. And uh, that's another, another great series I should probably review as well. Um, and so these are incredible recreations of the most iconic types of amplifiers and effects used on electric basses. Um, if you want a, a very clear description on, on how I use some of this, uh, you can check out my video on a songwriting camp that I joined. And it absolutely blew my mind. I had like, you know, a, an enveloper. I think I added some, some uh, distortion or something. It sounded ridiculous. All right. For a totally complete palette of amplified tone, Moto Bass can work in tandem with Amplitube. Uh, using only the DI volume as the output from the plugin, clicking on the amp or an effect in the central view in the upper tab will show the related parameters for quick and easy adjustments. When the amp effects tab is selected, the central view is a 3D representation of the uh, gear that you're using. So the two amplifiers that they are um, emulating here, the solid state amp and the tube amp, which is on the right hand side. So if you wanna go more modern, let's go with the solid state. If you wanna go more vintage, let's go with the tube. So at the moment I have the, Looks like the modern sound. So if I wanted to switch that, I could just click on that. Now everything changes accordingly. And so uh, let's say if I click on one of these pedals down here, you can see that the GUI changes. And if I want to turn these off, I just click on the GUI. And these are either enabled or they're not. There's a small light that indicates it's bypass state or it's on state. Uh, and also you can just see it's highlighted inside of the GUI right there. Uh, okay, let's uh, keep going. All right, all the various effects types, all the usual suspects for, for bass, right? An octave uh, plug-in, distortion, chorus, compressor. Definitely need that. Delay, uh, envelope filter. Let's check some of these out. So in the case of this performance here, it definitely needs a bit more um, energy. So... Um, let's see if we could change some of the dials here to make this really consistent across the board. So listen to that detail right here's with it off. It sounds real. It sounds authentic. But now the consistency is being supplied by this compressor pedal. Okay, next I'm gonna click on the octave pedal. I will enable it to turn it on. And then let's see if we can find a nice blend here. Okay, so that in combination with let's say an envelope filter, check it out. So that's uh, a good option, but also, of course, we need to talk about distortion, right? Let's see what this sounds like. In fact, let me go to this line if you don't mind. Now, guys, remember, this is where we started before all this. Let me bypass all these. 
Check it out. Pretty bananas. All right, uh, control. All right, last section here. This section displays the main controls of the software, such as MIDI controls, pitch wheel, key switches, and other settings that allow you to control Moto Bass with a MIDI controller in the most convenient way. Looks like there's a slide range. The slide is regulated by the pitch wheel by default. Let's see where that is. Slide range. Hmm, where is it? Oh, top of the screen. I'm looking down here. All right, cool. So, yeah, this is usually controlled by the pitch wheel. So, you can create some of uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, the vibrato rate is going to be controlled by the mod wheel. So, we're looking for things like vibrato, things of that nature. All of that can be controlled there. So, if you want to understand the performance and articulation controls, so here's everything you're going to need. Looks like you can uh, turn certain things on and off. For example, if you want to force an E uh, string, if you hit E0, it's going to do that. Um, you can turn finger mode on by hitting the articulation C sharp 0. Same with pick and slap mode. Okay, cool. Any control can be associated to a key switch, pitch wheel, or a MIDI message like control change and aftertouch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remind myself about that. Key switches can also be located on keys in the playable range, which can be handy on short keyboards. Uh, in this case, the key switch has priority over the note, which will not play. Wait a minute, what does that mean? It can be located on keys in the playable range, which can be handy on short keyboards. In this case, the key switch has priority over the note, which will not play. Hmm. Uh, that I need to spend some time on. Um, all right, yeah, so as I said, here are some of the articulation settings. They go over uh, the hammer on and pull off articulation. Which one is that? So that's C0. If you want to play with that, ghost mode. What is, oh, so you're playing like ghost notes on the bass. So let's see, what note is that? A sharp minus one. Let's see if I can pull that off real quick. So, uh, let me move this down here. A sharp minus one. Ah. Okay, so looks like I just hit this articulation for ghost notes. In order to really hear this, I have to play this with uh, another preset because otherwise this is just going to sound too uh, weird. Let's see. Let me play this bass line over here. And okay, so it just enabled it. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, man. So when, okay, so... Uh, as you guys can see, I'm playing this back, right? Um, check it out. Okay, and when I hit that particular articulation, in, in conjunction with the MIDI region that's currently playing back, we get those ghost notes. Check it out. That is the wildest thing i've never seen that done before uh, uh, again i've only been doing this for seven and a half years so maybe somebody's done it but i definitely don't think anybody's done it as effective as this let's check out harmonics uh f0 let me just try and find that on my controller here uh let's see i think i was close um i don't have your typical controller i have to kind of look for stuff a little bit more okay here it is take a listen these are harmonics <laughs> That sounds so good. 
That is crazy. All right, let me just go to C0. One sec. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, so right now I'm playing with the hammer on and pull off, and I can I can actually hear the performance. Um, I, I think we'll hear it a little bit better with this. Check it out. Yeah, that one is a little tougher to hear. Uh, maybe if I'm actually playing hammer-ons. So do you hear the difference there? You can hear the texture change. Um, so here's regular. So you're just playing one note, then the other, one note, then the other. But when I hold the keyboard modifier, it is uh, C0, uh, or uh, keyboard modifier, articulation. Now you can hear it change. Right? Kind of pulling off the, um, the hammer-on or pull-off feel. Um, very cool. Vibrato set to... Uh, the pitch bend or CC1 rather, which is modulation, slide. I'm just seeing if there's anything else for us here. Mm, oh, chord mode. What is that? Uh, that I don't even know how to turn on. I got to be honest. Like, what do you have to do? Oh, you just literally, hold on. Yeah, I don't hear a difference here. All right, we got some information on chord mode. That would be great. Um, let me just see if there's anything here. Harmonics, let ring. This is uh, something we've talked about already. Plug position controls the plug position of the selected playing style. Um, we've gone over this kind of stuff already. Gauges chord mode allows you to, to multiple to multiple simultaneous notes in the fretting hand. Mm, I don't, what does that mean? Chord mode allows multiple simultaneous notes in the fretting hand. But can't you do that normally though? Yeah, not sure what that means. Um, cool, you have the ability to customize all of these. Should it work a little bit better for your workflow? Let's say you want to move those articulations um, closer to you know, I don't know if you have a 25 range keyboard, right? This allows you to better uh, perform. That's cool. You could do all that. You have the piano keyboard, which shows you the uh, the note range plus assigned key switches for the real time control of the playing style. The bass fretboard shows the position of the left hand, which determines where the note is played, which fret and which string. The system positions the left hand as close as possible to how a real bass player would um, play. It also allows key switches to force the use of a determined fret or string. Um, so you could do that as well. As Moto Bass is not a sample based engine, the left hand behavior system literally recreates the feel and sound of a real hand moving on the instrument neck and its force on the strings. We then go into a section where we talk about troubleshooting. If you need help, the IK Multimedia Manager is really going to be the way to go. So please download that accordingly. And that should take care of most of the issues. I wanted to thank you so much for the opportunity to chill with you, to hang out. This is Eddie Gray on behalf of Resources for the Modern Creative. wanted to say a big thank you to everybody. Uh, bear in mind, if you haven't downloaded our 10 free Logic cour courses, those are still available right now on the market. They're crushing it. We have like thousands of streams already. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, link is in the description below. And besides that, thank you so much for everything. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep winning every single day. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much.